Hello everyone, I am Rudul Arkadi. Name of this subject is Principles of Programming Languages. Under Unit 4, we have Java as Object Oriented Programming Language as an overview. The contents of this video will be Java history, JVM and JDK, features of Java, architecture of JVM, and entry point of the Java program. So, whenever we'll complete studying this unit number 4 and 5. Fourth, as I've already told you, Java as OP language. And the fifth is inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation using Java. So, this three things comes under OP concepts. Whenever you'll complete studying this two units, students will easily understand and apply this features of Java programming. So, uh, this two things comes under Bloom's level L2 and L3 that is understanding and applying the features. Outcome of this video will be um, you will have good knowledge of working environment of the Java and understand the basics of Java language and its features. So, whenever we start learning any computer language, our uh, pure basics should be clear. So, first question is what is library? So, we have already used library in C, C++. So, this is the basic of any language that what is library. Yes, I'll give you one real life example like uh, whenever we um, in we learn tables in maths. So, um, that tables are already fit uh, in our brains. So, whenever we do multiplication, we unknowingly extract that tables and apply it for multiplication. The same way library works. There are already predefined functions already available in that library and uh, whenever we include it in our program, we can unknowingly use that features under that library in our program. Second question is what is hash? So, hash is simple word or simple symbol of the English in English language. But in our programming language, hash is known as preprocessor directive. Yes. So, um, this hash is followed by an identifier and that identifier is known as directive name. So, whenever we write hash include, include is a directive name. Yes. The third is what is escape sequence. Yes. Escape sequence is we use slash n slash t. So, what we do is we escape from the sequence. Slash n is new line and slash t is like a tab from our keyboard. The fourth point is what is pointer? Pointer is variable that can store memory address of another variable. But remember, Java does not support this pointers concept. Java supports the concept of references. Yes, the fifth point is what is correct from the following? Which statement is correct from the following? Yes, uh, think for two seconds. Yes, you are right. All the four are correct. Yes, C is high level, structured, procedure oriented and platform dependent language. But remember, Java is platform independent language. It is high level, it is object oriented, but it is platform independent. The sixth point is what is considered as entry point in the C programming. Yes, entry point is nothing but uh, from where the compiler starts reading your program is void main, right? And in Java also we have public static void main. Um, one more question is do your computer understands high level language? Correct. No computer cannot understand high level language so we need compiler or interpreter to make the computer understand high level language yes now in java we have compiler named as java c this java c converts source code into intermediate file known as byte code so java c converts source code means whatever you have written will be converted to byte code. This byte code is unique for all types of operating system. Yes. 
then the interpreter of java that is java convert this byte code into language specific i will not say language specific converts that byte code into a specific operating system compatible machine code and this code will vary according to operating system we'll discuss this further okay so see this diagram you'll write your source code right that will be given as input to jdk jdk full form is java development kit okay so java development kit will have the compilation done by java c compiler so in under this jdk your compiler of java that is java c compile the program yes the output of this jdk will be byte code now the point is what is byte code do you know a shorthand language yes the byte code is like a shorthand language that store each keyword of java as a sign and each sign takes one byte of memory in ram so it is called as byte code file it is saved as dot class file by compiler yes now you will say ki there is already a compiler but in this diagram i can see interpreter also so byte code is given as input to interpreter that is jvm java virtual machine and then this jvm will give us a final output so you will say why both like compiler also and interpreter also so see in C or C++, compiler converts source code into specific OS machine code, right? But see, Unix can't use Turbo C compiler. For, we, for what purpose we use Turbo C compiler is to compile C or C++ programs. So, Unix can't use that Turbo C. So, programmer needs to design a different compiler for different OS. And that is definitely a time-consuming and costly too, right? So, solution to, to this is to make a unique compiler that produces platform independent bytecodes. And JVM, that is Java Virtual Machine or Interpreter, converts that bytecode into machine code that will vary from operating system to operating system. So, OS to OS, it will change. So, making different JVM for different OS was easier and economical than the whole compiler getting yes so java development kit that is jdk it includes java runtime environment that is jre compilers and various tools like java doc or java debugger yes so it's a, a complete java development kit that includes jre compilers various tools yes in order to create compile and run java program you need to install jdk on your pc to compile and run what you need a jdk yes then uh, what is jre that is java runtime environment it you understood that it is a part of jdk when jre is installed on your system you can run a java program but you cannot compile it so, JRE includes JVM, browser plugins and applet support. Yes. Now, last point is JVM. JVM executes the bytecode produced by compiler. Each operating system have different JVM. However, the output they produce after execution of bytecode is same across all the operating system. Yes, this is important. JVM executes the bytecode produced by compiler. Each operating system will have different JVM. But however, the operating system, sorry, the output they produce after execution of bytecode is same across all the operating systems. Right. That is why Java is called as platform independent language. Getting? Yes. So, don't forget this. The first one says, hello, I am JVM. What it does is, I 
provide runtime environment to execute the byte code correct second one says hello i am jdk i am physically exists and contains java tools jvm and jre and the last one says hello i am jre and what jre does is i am a collection of set of libraries and different tools right now the history um java language developed by the company sun microsystems and the creator is james gosling now um, the group of four students at stanford university was having one problem like uh, they wanted to create one uh, remote control which can access all the electronic appli appliances like see um, currently uh, we can use our redmi uh, phone to access the uh, electronic appliances like uh, to on and off the tv uh, ac the same way they wanted to create one remote control that can access all the electronic app app appliances so that students contacted james james gosling they created that remote control and given the name as green they launched it in 1992 so in that um, creation process we know gosla was one of them was one of them and he was indian so based on that concept uh they decided based on that remote control concept they decided to have one platform independent language the same thing is there that uh, it can be run on any platform so they developed the language and named it as oak and later it uh, renamed it as java so this is the basic history of java language uh Sun Microsystems is now acquired by Oracle. Uh, in 2010, it is acquired for by Oracle. So uh, we get all the documentations or the latest versions on the official website of Oracle now. Yes, the punchline of the Java is Java is everywhere, and write once, run everywhere, or write once and run anywhere. so it is like we have jvm for different os so we can write it only once source code is written only once and we can run it on any operating system just by installing different jvm for different os right so there are uh, different versions like java se that is core java standard edition java ee that is enterprise edition advanced java me that is micro edition for mobiles nowadays we use android um, but java is also used in android and many more the base for the java is java se yes now the features of java so um as i have already explained that java is a platform independent language and how that is uh, platform independent so first feature is the most important feature that java is platform independent language second is java is object oriented language yes so uh, for the first point uh, i already explained that uh, jvm executes byte code produced by compiler and uh, byte code can run on any platform such as windows linux mac os so program compiled on windows can be run on linux getting this thing yes the second point is object oriented language so uh, under object oriented language we have four main concepts of object oriented programming uh, we all know the encapsulation encapsulation is data hiding plus abstraction so wrapping of data and functions in a single unit for example we can say class the class is having data and functions together that is nothing but encapsulation and the abstraction is act of representing essential features without including the background details so complex background details are hided and essential features that are useful for any user are represented 
so uh, we can take the uh, simple example of car so in car accelerator blade brake clutch gearbox at the same place so they are at the same place that is nothing but encapsulation we can easily find out these things around us when we are driving but but we we only know the basic features like by pressing accelerator car is going to move ahead that is abstraction driver commonly is unaware of how it works like what exactly happens inside the car that is the mechanism of car is hide it this is a simple example of encapsulation and abstraction now the third feature of java is it is simple i missed the point sorry i missed the point of inheritance and polymorphism so inheritance is the process in by which the objects of one class acquire the properties of another class so there are different types of um, inheritance like multiple single multi level etc and polymorphism is, is ability to take more than one forms like uh, we can use function overloading or operator overloading so for this the example is plus this symbol is used for addition and also the concatenation of the strings right the third feature of java is it's a simple language um java does not have the complex features like operator overloading multiple inheritance pointers and explicit memory allocation so it is considered to be featured to be a simple language then it is a robust language why we say robust is uh, it is reliable um it is re reliable due to the addition of some features like uh, garbage collection exception handling and a good memory allocation system so it is considered as robust then um, next feature is it is secure so java does not support pointers and uh, we cannot access out of bound arrays like if you try to access out of bound array you'll get an error or exception like array index out of bound so um, there are several security flaws like stack corruption or buffer overflow which is impossible to exploit in java the very next is java is distributed language there are um, some distributed applications like rmi and ejb which are used for creating distributed applications in java the next thing is multi threading which allows concurrent execution of two or more parts of the program for maximum utilization of cpu which is one of the feature of java the last is portable portable is obviously the platform independent byte code can be carried to any platform for the execution and that makes java code portable right so finally you have understood that first we have dot java file that is source code we provide it to compiler which is java c that java c will convert that dot java file to dot class file that is byte code and then that byte code can be executed on any jvm and that jvm will be different for different operating system yes so this is the basics of java and uh, this is the jvm architecture in jvm architecture we have class loader subsystem uh, in which all the class files will be included and um, this class lo loader reads that dot class file and save it in the form of byte code in method area this method area is one uh, one of the part of jvm and which is shared among all the classes this holds the class level information of each dot class file then the heap is there heap is the part of jvm memory where objects are allocated jvm creates a class object for each dot class file so next is a stack stack is used for storing memory variables then the pc registers are there native 
method stacks are there and this thing comes to execution engine and execution engine and native method interface are interrelated and this interface is provided input from the library so pc registers what pc registers do is it keeps track of the instructions like which which will be the next instruction to be executed is under pc registers then native stack is used for accessing runtime data then native method interface is enables java code to call or to be called by native application and last is garbage collection so garbage collection is uh, a class instance which is explicitly created by java code and after use it is automatically destroyed by the java collection for the memory management and the last point of this video is entry point of the java so we need to write public static void main in bracket string the brackets and args so i'll i'll be just explaining the uh, meaning of each word as public is we can access from outside the class so it is a access specifier static is if some function is static means no need to create object for calling it see we whenever we write it we we don't have any need to call the main function it will directly get called by itself so that is why the word static is used so main method don't belong to any specific object jvm can can call it without any object All right the third word is void void is it cannot return anything that is a return type and main is a function name now the next point is string string and the brackets so it is a predefined class and as it is a predefined class we need to write the s as capital so it is very mandatory to write s as capital as it is a predefined class and the last is args args is an array variable of string type so you can change the name of args even if you don't want to pass anything through the args still you need to write it as a syntax yes so this is the basics of java